Hey, welcome everyone to who is just joining the Youth and Schools Forum. Um, I may be a new face for lots of you, but my name is Louisa Brown. I'm the new Youth and Schools Officer. I don't know how long I can say new for, but I've been with the Scotland Malawi Partnership since October last year, and it's been a pleasure getting to know some of you, and I'm still getting to know many new faces. And I'm very excited to start today's Youth and Schools Forum which is one of the first in quite a long time focusing on partnerships in a pandemic. So we're absolutely thrilled to have participants from many different districts of Malawi and parts of Scotland as well and beyond, bringing unique perspectives as well as perhaps shared experiences of partnerships during this very strange year that we've been experiencing so far. So this forum is being recorded and will be made available online as a video on YouTube afterwards so that as many people as possible can share in it. By participating in this meeting, we take this as your consent to be featured in the recording. Many of us are familiar with Zoom, um, but do not worry if you're not, I'll just go through a few brief housekeeping points. So we are all centrally muted right now, and that's just so that we can all hear whoever is speaking with as little competing background noise as possible. When you're invited to, uh, to speak, please unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon at the bottom of your screen, and we'll all be able to hear you. It's natural to forget, so don't worry if you do, just wave at us and we'll do our best. Please feel welcome to keep your video on or switch it off, whichever you prefer, and you just click the camera icon to do so. And if you want to change your view, please click the view icon at the top right and you can see everyone in gallery view or you can focus on the speakers in speaker view. We're going to use lots of the chat function today as well. You please actually make the most of this chat function because you can send a message to everyone through this, through this which is the default setting. Um, and if you want to speak to a specific individual, just use the drop down menu before you send something and you can send a private message. Really nice idea is to start this meeting by introducing yourself in the chat, maybe say your name and where you're based, even share your email if you're interested to collaborate with anyone. It's a valuable space in which to post questions, get comments and even post any links to resources that you might like to share. We'll collate all and any information included in this chat function, which has been addressed to everyone and email this to participants after the event. If you have any direct messages with individuals, these won't be captured by us, so please do feel free to save them yourself. In the next few days, as a follow-up to this event, we will send you the link to the video together with any presentations that have been made available by the presenters. So we've quite a full agenda today, and we'll be very strict with timings, so that we have time for every speaker and the presentations, plus the discussions in our breakout groups. Aiming to finish by six o'clock UK time, 8 p.m. in Malawi. We'd love to benefit from learning, learning all about your experiences in the breakout groups as you listen to our speakers today. So please think about how their reflections um, as they relate to your lived reality of partnerships in a pandemic. As we all know and are currently experiencing, this is a time like no other when we cannot work in the ways that we are used to. Does this mean that we have to abandon life as it was altogether? Or have we actually learned to adapt do partnerships in fact help our collective resistance or resilience to COVID-19? This Youth and Schools Forum, Partnerships in a Pandemic, is to try and answer these questions and to share learning to inspire and inform each other's projects to the best level possible. Currently, Scotland is experiencing a harsh second wave of the pandemic, more deadly than the first. The country is currently under lockdown where everyone is advised to stay at home as much as possible and essential travel only allowed, just essential businesses also open. Schools move back to remote learning already after Christmas holidays, exams will be cancelled, education is now delivered online and teachers are working hard to adapt again and keep children and young people engaged whilst delivering the curriculum. Malawi, as many of you know, is also experiencing a second wave of COVID-19 with drastically increased infection rates. In response, the, cover, uh, the president has declared a state of disaster. Primary and secondary schools in the country reopened as planned in early January this year. Uh, Malawi school certificate of education examinations have actually been cancelled in 2020 and are currently being re-administered throughout January this year. All day schools are now closed since last Thursday for three weeks at least. Only those taking part in the examinations are actually allowed to, uh, to attend school at the moment. 
So whilst COVID-19 has not brought comfort to any, there is still something remarkable about such fast adaptation to digital. Scotland-Malawi partnership events have seen attendance numbers soar, some with even more Malawian representation than the Scottish, which is something really worth noting. So I'm pleased to welcome so many from across both countries to this call today. We're here to share knowledge and experience from both Malawi and Scotland of running school partnerships during nearly one year of the COVID-19 pandemic. We want to make useful introductions between teachers in both countries to enhance the opportunity for Malawians specifically to be involved in this conversation and to gain a collective insight to more helpful ways of working during this time. Coming up, we'll be hearing from three schools in Malawi and three schools in Scotland throughout all areas. And they'll be talking about their experiences of partnerships, the successes and the challenges so far under the pandemic. Following this, we'll hear from Steka Skills on the development and impact of their dialogue and approach towards school visits in Malawi. And Orbis Expeditions will give us current travel, uh, current travel updates and prognosis for the future. Then we'll break out, break out into small discussion groups to consider questions of how do we use partnership to help sustain schools in both countries during this pandemic? And what are our best, me best methods for sharing and learning? Does digital really work for all? So without further ado, I would like to get moving with the agenda. Um, our first speaker, I would like to warmly welcome Ian Mitchell, a teacher at Beath House School, High School in Fife in central Scotland. Ian, are you there? I am indeed, Louisa. Welcome. The stage is yours. Ian, I think you're on mute there, I'm afraid. Oh, morning, Nancy. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm the principal teacher of physics at uh, Beath High School in Fife, but uh, I'm also part of a group that's uh, involved, obviously, with uh, a partnership in Malawi. Uh, for it. So um, this is the first time I've ever had to share my screen, Louisa, so I'm hoping things work. Looks fab. There we go, right. Um, just a bit of background. Uh, BIS is actually a six-year uh, secondary school in Fife, and we have a link with two primary schools in Malawi, uh, one Mapanga Primary School and the other uh, in Jali. Um, so you can see they're both down in the south. Okay, Mapanga is in the Malangi area, and in Jali is in Cholo. Um, We've been linked with them now for the best part of six years uh, for us, and it's been a very successful partnership and continues to grow. The photograph you see in front of you now um, was uh, taken on the first school trip in 2016. Uh, Douglas Young, the head teacher from BC, you can see in the centre there, made it very clear at the beginning that the partnership was not about individuals, uh, it was uh, about the schools. And perhaps the most interesting thing about this photograph is that all three head teachers have now moved on and the partnership is still strong. The phrase at the top, hopefully you can see, of three schools, two continents, one goal, was put together to emphasise that we were all working for the same purpose. That although we were three schools, many, many miles apart from each other, we had the one goal to try and improve the lot uh, for the young learners in our care. This was a photograph uh, when we arrived in 2018 in Mapanga. Uh, very pleasant experience as always and a similar one and you'll get a chance to hear Peter who's at the front of the photograph there uh, after myself. Uh, this was the senior class in Jolly. Always a very warm welcome. It's not just the schools though. Uh, we made a conscious effort to get involved with the communities and the bottom left hand picture is taken from our first visit in the Chondi Church and the top right hand picture was taken where we visited in 2018 with our second school visit at uh, the, the Catholic Church uh, which is in the Injali area. 
We were fortunate to get involved, let's say, with the communities. This is uh, Mrs Curry in the sort of blue speckled top, one of our music teachers uh, being uh, entertained by the ladies' choir uh, from Chundi uh, during that second visit. And we were also fortunate enough to be invited to, shall we say, break bread and certainly share fellowship, okay, with the priest and the staff uh, from the Injali area in that same visit. As been said plenty of times, um, these are unusual times, okay, certainly very challenging. About this time last year, we got a message from Injali saying that a storm had actually damaged the staff latrines. And recently we got another message saying another storm had actually damaged one of the classroom areas at Mapanga. Thankfully, both have now been repaired, okay, through support from ourselves. Uh, to just try and make things a bit easier at what are, let's say, challenging times. This I got from Clements, one of our contacts at Mapanga, one of our friends there, and it was just to give us an idea as to the changing state of play in Malawi. Again, we're fortunate enough uh, to get some funding out to them, uh, emphasising that the, the face, uh, hands and space idea. So we were able to give them some funding which they then used for buying uh, soap and buckets at all the schools. This is uh, from Anjali, previous one is from Panga. And we've also been able to support them in some CPD uh, where they have been involved in events to try and help with safeguarding people during uh, coronavirus times and also safeguarding uh, vulnerable learners. Peter, as I said, you'll be hearing, has been very fortunate. Uh, we have him as part of our group and he's been uh, helpful in visiting some of our scholarship students because the secondary schools have still been in even when some of the primaries were closed and these are just uh, some of the visits uh, to the schools uh, which Peter took on our part. Normally we would do that uh, when we were out in Malawi because we try and go uh, at least every second year. Let's see, life goes on. Uh, it was an eye-opener last night to be involved with the Scottish Malawi cross-party group to hear uh, some of the, the sad stories uh, taking place in Malawi. But uh, we are hopefully very supportive of our partnership and it does grow from strength to strength. Uh, it's been very supportive getting messages from Malawi when we were struggling and now I think we can reciprocate that uh, as Malawi goes through a difficult time. These are masks, Manchester, Clements are on their way um, uh, to Mapanga and to Njali for the staff, but uh, I think due to travel uh, restrictions, particularly in South Africa, um, they're being delayed. So a mixture of things of what we've had to do with our partnership okay, during these times, Louisa. Jacoma Kwambiri. Thanks so much, Ian. It's wonderful to see all the ways that you've been involved with um, getting stuck into helping your partners with COVID and restrictions and adapting to the situation. I really do hope your face masks reach their own time um, <laughs> or sometime soon, at least. Um, thank you very much. Um, Ian, if you're able to press stop sharing for your screen, we'll move on to a very interesting new speaker who happens to be from Injali and Mapanga Partnership, which is the partner school of Ian Mitchell, who is currently awaiting the, uh, the given face masks in the last slide there. So Peter Mchenga, do we have you on the call today? Yes, I'm available for everyone. Welcome, do go ahead. Moribangino say this evening. <clears throat> Uh, since uh, Ian has already tackled a lot of issues you know, an introduction and uh, other issues that I was about to present, I will just uh, focus much on the objective of this meeting, starting with uh, the experiences which we had during this uh, COVID pandemic. One, we shared the uh, challenges and the positive ways of living. And uh, from there, we were able to com communicate using WhatsApp so that uh, we keep on touch. And uh, because of uh, failure to have uh, Fiona and the team from Scotland to visit us here, they transferred some of the responsibilities that they were supposed to do, like visiting the uh, runners who are in secondary school and the others who are uh, uh, some three kids who are in the school at the Mountain View Primary School. 
So I did this on behalf of the partnership and made the available reports. And uh, BIT has been supporting us by sharing us uh, money for buying soap, as you have seen from the pictures that he and he produced to you, and the traveling uh, funding for me to visit the schools. So it has been a great period where we learned that though we are far from each other, but still things can keep on moving on trust that we are aware of what we are doing. So the second point is the use of introducing teachers between the introduction of teachers between us. We have shared a lot of issues, uh, particularly in academic issues or teaching issues. We were sharing notes and we have been sharing notes and we will continue sharing notes so that what Malawian learners need to know, they have to know and the same with the Bithy Renas. And I'm glad to say that this time Ian can speak in some ways in Jijewa, which is very important for us because when they visit us, most of the time they struggle in communicating with the community because they only know English, our community, know our local language, which is Jijewa. So by learning some words in Jijewa, it has hastened the communication between Bithy and the uh, Njare uh, and Mapanga. And on the same, we shared not only the way how we can assist learners who have dropped or has, who dropped out of school because of a COVID-19 epidemic. Malawi experienced this. Most of learners dropped out of school. Some girls got pregnant, some got married. But because of the policy of readmission to school policy, which the government is implementing, we were able, or we have been able to uh, provide guidance and counseling to these learners so that they are back to school. Some of them, they are back to school, and the others say, are still nursing the, their kids, but thereafter they will go back to school. And the, I, on enhancing the opportunities of Malawi and being involved in this conservation is that we mm -hmm. need to make sure that uh issues that are coming to Malawi, they are coming from the Malawian youth and the learners in the schools. Because most of the time when uh, Western countries are providing assistance to African countries, most of them, they just impose. But in this conservation will, discussion will help us that we really give you or we share the real issues that Malawi need, not the, what others may think it will be done in Malawi. And the... Uh, Digital will help in uh, giving out uh, communication, though Malawi is uh, having challenges in uh, maintaining data. So to maintain this, I have uh, three or four ideas that I should like to share with you, you, our friends. One is helping to campaign the reduction of data charges. Malawi is experiencing high charges on data. And at the same time, to assist us, we have to produce materials that teachers can use when they are, when learners are at school. As of now, schools are closed. We need to produce materials that can help learners to be learning while they are in home, as our sister Bithy is doing. And yes, another point is that since we have uh, misinformation in Malawi, that is the vaccine which is coming, is deadly to Africans. It is very important that we produce materials that can produce good messages to help people and the learners to accept the vaccination as this is the only hope for us to be free from COVID-19. But the messages need to be positive messages that can really help. And lastly, we need to provide psychosocial support for those learners who have been found with the COVID-19. In so doing, we will help and we will maintain the partnership between Malawi and Scotland because the sustainability of the partnership depends on the children we have now. Thank you very much, Ziko Mokwambiri, everyone. Peter Mtenga, thank you so much. That was a really insightful review of how COVID is over in Malawi just now and some very helpful pointers, pointers already for the things that would help that schools over here can already use as activities within their partnerships. That was Peter Mchenga from Southern Malawi. 
Next, I would like to invite Shirley Bean from Southern Scotland. Um, in the Leaven, Shirley, Shirley Bean is a teacher at St Ronan's Primary School and would like to talk about her Warm Heart of Africa Day. Over to you, Shirley. Hello, uh, greetings to everyone. Um, from Inarithan in the Scottish borders, uh, as Louisa kindly said, my name is Shirley Bean. I'm the pupil support teacher at our local primary school, St Ronan's. Our whole community of Inarithan has a strong partnership with Tondwe in Zomba, uh, near Zomba in Malawi. In October 2017, I was lucky enough to be part of a group visit to Malawi. And from then, the school partnership was formed and has gone from strength to strength. And it has really enriched the lives of the children in St Ronan's and hopefully the children in Tondre as well. And uh, I see that Annie's the, Annie, the head teacher there, is, is attending. So greetings, Annie. Um, our school formed a Malawi um, group committee, um, one pupil from each class, that's from primary one, five years old, and up to primary seven, the 11 year olds, uh, to launch the, uh, the, the group's activities and to, to tell the rest of the school what, what we were planning to do. We decided, um, a phrase that I came back from Malawi um, loving was the warm heart of Africa. So we decided to hold an assembly uh, on the 14th of February, in 20, uh, 2018 and we called it the Warm Heart of Africa Day and um, everyone was encouraged to either wear a heart or wear a Malawi flag and you'll see some of the pictures were, were going on on the um, uh, on the screen there we go and uh, or you could do both some people um, uh, did a, a, a mixture of half a Malawi flag half a St Andrew's cross um, but some not all pupils like dressing up and um, uh, uh, so, um, oh, sorry, I, I've skipped a wee bit. Uh, but some the it was optional if the children wanted to bring a donation, which we would put to good use to support our, our partnership. And and we've purchased supplies for our friends and desks and basins and soap more recently. Um, as uh, I think Ian Mitchell was saying from from Fife, uh, so so um, important to help our, our friends uh, fight COVID. But in school these days, fundraising groups have a lot of worthy competition from all sorts of, of, um, of, of worthy charities. But our head teacher at the time, uh, he agreed to make February the 14th an annual event, a Warm Heart of Africa Day in our school. And each year it's got stronger and better. We always have an assembly. Uh, our partner school joins us as well. They usually send photographs or they will send a, a, a video or greetings. The video might actually be from their, their uh, partnership group as well and that's absolutely wonderful. Um, but dressing up isn't every child's idea of fun. It's not everybody's uh, bag as they say but some of our boys um, uh, drew tattoos on their faces or on their cheeks. Um, just to, of course they had parental permission <laughs> to do that so that they were participating. Some people wore socks with hearts in it uh, some people went all out and had hearts everywhere. Uh, but I think the extra thing that our head teacher liked, particularly in a primary school, he said that what he really liked about it was that uh, we were showing love to our fellow human beings and our friends in, in Tondre, but the usual traumas that some children have on Valentine's Day in a primary school can be, uh, children can be in tears because they didn't uh, receive any Valentine's card or in tears because they got Valentine's cards and they didn't want them. So our focus is now the warm heart of Africa. And um, this year though, what do we do? Um, we, we, because our schools are close to our children, uh, to, the, to all of their children, but we meet daily on teams. So instead of doing a fundraising event, we're actually asking the children to, um, to wear a heart or wear a, a, a Malawi flag on the nearest Thursday, I think, um, uh, Valentine's Day is a Sunday this year, so it's going to be the Thursday beforehand. Beforehand, but we're encouraging them all to um, instead instead of raising money, they're going to uh, or making a donation. We're asking the children to do a random act of kindness uh, to a sibling, which sometimes can be quite challenging, to a parent, uh, to a relative or a neighbour, and it may be something as simple as a phone call. And there's there's a picture of our our friends in Tondwe doing the heart shapes and sending us all the best, uh, sending us love. Um, but please feel free to share this annual day 
uh, in your school um, and let us know if you do it because we would really like uh, the Warm Heart of Africa Day to become a thing in Scotland. So Zekomo for listening and Annie, the bunting that we made will come out as soon as it's safe to uh, for Dennis to bring out, hopefully. Thank you. Thanks so much, Shirley. Really inspiring to see about the warm heart of Africa Day happening down at St Ronan's Primary in Innerleithen. Thank you so much for your contribution. I'm sure that inspires many of the schools that are on the call today and warms the hearts of the Malawians to see so. <laughs> um, next up, we have hopefully have a speaker from central Malawi. I know there's been some connectivity issues. So I'll just check if our speaker, speaker from Mbuka Primary School, Mr Nkoma, has made it onto the call today. Mr Nkoma, are you there? Okay, I think we'll need to move on. Mr Nkoma, if you are there and you manage to unmute yourself, do just interrupt me if so, but otherwise we'll move straight on to Keith Murphy who is a teacher at Pennycook High School in Midlothian, Central Scotland. Keith, are you there? And would you like to speak? Hi, Louisa, how are you doing? Hi. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Good. Um, right, I think I'm just going to share my screen. Can you see my PowerPoint okay? Oh, we can't no. see. Um, we do have it on our side if it's a problem, Keith, so don't worry. Um, why is that not? What about that? Is that any better? Uh, I'm afraid not, Keith. But shall okay. shall we show it? And we can you can just tell us when to move slides. Yeah, that'd be grand. Thanks. Great. I'll ask Craig to do that just now. If we can. That's for Pennycook High School. That's, That's it now. Me. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, so uh, my name is Keith Murphy um, from Pennycook High School and we're in partnership with Namad's Community Day Secondary School, which is actually just the next um, next town over from uh, Shirley's uh, That's town right, in yeah. So in fact, I think we were probably in Malawi in 2017 at the same time. Um, I and I'm also, very nice. Yeah, and I'm also delighted that James, the partnership coordinator from Namad's is with us tonight as well. I saw you there, James, so nice to see you, hi. Um, yeah, I mean, we've we've had a partnership um, with Nomads um, really established in 2017 and it's we've actually managed to um, run two reciprocal visits, one in 2017, which was a staff reciprocal visit, and then one in 2019, where we had um, staff and students um, making the, the visit either way. And it's a partnership which I think has been growing in strength. Um, and we've, we've experienced a lot of joint activities and things together. Um, could you possibly pop onto the next slide? So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess when I was thinking about tonight, I thought what's, what, rather than, um, you know, um, I, th I thought it'd be quite useful to talk about where I found issues since March last year with the partnership. Um, and, you know, I think one of the biggest things, I, I thought I'd look at challenges and opportunities, but I thought one of the biggest things is planning. I think it has been incredibly difficult to, um, at the moment, work on any long term plans with our, our, our partners. Um, I think we're obviously living through a constantly evolving picture with um, COVID, um, which makes it difficult, you know, we, um, to, to, to make any sort of longer term plans. Um, for example, we were due uh, to, to have the next series of reciprocal visits um, this coming summer in June, which obviously are, are no longer taking place. And it's actually quite difficult to think how far into the future um, before we will we'll be able to have those face-to-face -face visits again, particularly if you're organising a reciprocal visit for students. Um, the, the actual time length of planning, you're probably talking 18 months or two years to actually um, go through the planning process till the actual visits take place. So I think that's certainly a fine planning has been um, a, a significant challenge. However, that being said, we, you know, we're speaking to, to James um, recently and they've started one of the, the things within our partnership agreement was looking at sustainability, aspects of sustainability. Um, so I know at the MAD side, um, they've been looking at establishing a tree nursery um, out in the, the community. And we were actually in talks with our local, um, local estate 
um, in Pennycook um, to, to look at planting trees to offset the carbon that would be used through the reciprocal visits. So, you know, we have been making some sort of um, progress that way. I think one of the other issues really uh, or challenges is about the priorities and I think priorities really come in at a local level I and mean, I found um, that at the moment in school although we're working really hard we're kind of getting by um, obviously up until the point where we've not been in school but we're kind of getting by because um, you're not able to run the curriculum in the same way as you normally would you're not be able to have the interactions with young people that you normally would um, and that's that is a kind of challenge um, and I think also in terms of priorities, we found, um, and it'll be the same <laughs> in all schools, I mean, in our exam system, um, the exams have been cancelled this year, but then the implication for that is you really have to think very local, like in your own school community, about how you can maximise the opportunities for the young people that you're working with. Um, and also moving on to developing resources and things for online and distance learning. So I think the, in terms of, growing the partnership, I think it's been looking very much priorities at a local level. Um, so yeah, I think also, um, I think we need to get back to a position of thriving. Once we can start to thrive again, then I think the partnerships will then be able to, to build on from where, where we left off. Um, I've put their whole school because I mean, a partnership really needs that whole school involvement. And I think by and large, up until March last year, I think both um, our, our community and the MADS community um, were quite good at involving the whole school in the partnership, either through involvement or um, keeping informed of what had been, been happening. Um, but again, I mean, if I talk about my own circumstance, I mean, I've got colleagues who I haven't actually face-to-face -face seen in the building since last August, um, because you, you're keeping sort of distanced, you're not having staff meetings, face-to-face -face staff meetings. So, you know, I think there's, in terms of involving the whole school, it has been quite difficult. Um, and, and things like assemblies, uh, while you can have virtual assemblies, the way our timetable structured is we've got a staggered start and end today and staggered lunges and staggered break times for the juniors and the seniors. So again, finding spots that um to, to run sort of whole school assemblies has been been quite difficult. Um so yeah so I think that 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 that's been a kind of level of challenge. I think in terms of opportunities though well, communication and, you know, we've been WhatsApping fairly regularly, as we always have been. But I think the focus of the WhatsApping recently has been much more about well-being um, rather than sort of talking about partnership work. Um, and I think that's that's a real positive in terms of building relationships and setting the ground for, for future. But it is really that kind of communication focus on people rather than focusing on, on the kind of work and project work aspects. Um, and also think, you know, we're going through a shared experience together just now. Um, and it's been having those, um, ha having those conversations about the COVID journey, both in your, in your local area, um, you know, where it's, because um, Namads is a rural school um, and we're obviously out with Edinburgh as well. So, you know, I think looking at how things are in the local communities, um, and that kind of being empath empathetic with, with one another about how, how things have been going. Um, I think that's been really, really important. Um, what we, we did do, however, is, um, and it was great because looking at opportunities, I'm a, I'm a music teacher and we put on a concert at Christmas, an online concert. And it, it's been really, really good because we managed to um, have our partner send over um, some Malawian Christmas songs and dancing and uh, wishes, well wishes. And um, so can you pop onto the next slide, please? That'd be great. Um, and it, it meant that we could all take part in the online concert together, which we shared obviously with our school community and we sent a link over to our partners as well. Um, and I guess that is really important and still having those um, moments where um, we're, we're sort of involving the whole school community and also kind of saying the partnership is still here, it's still growing, it's still um, moving forward. Um, so yeah, so I think there's been a number of challenges um, locally, um, but you know, I'm looking forward to a point where we can get back to um, sort of planning our joint partnership work again.
I think that's me. Thank you so much, Keith. Really insightful. And as we work through our speakers today, it's so fantastic to see the range of events and initiatives that have been sparked actually by the fact that we need to adapt to a completely new situation. I'm sure many of these things will be carried forward. Um, coming up next, we have Jailos Petros Mhango. I know that he's having also connectivity issues, calling in from Northern Malawi, Mzimba re uh, region. Jailos, would you like to to see if you can unmute and say the few words that you had prepared. Um, I'll hold the space just now in case you can. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you cannot see me because I'm standing outside the building where there is a little network, but if you can hear me a bit, you can see me yes. now. Ah, we fine. can hear you perfect. Yeah, uh, I am Jairus Mohango. Uh, head teacher, Mazozo Community Day Secondary School. We have a partner in Scotland, which is Auburn High School. We started our partnership in 2017. Uh, so far, they assisted us with the, the feeding program. Then in 2019, we had a, a visit. After they came in 20, 2017, they came to Malawi. Then uh, we managed the, to go to school, try to visit them. Uh, at the moment, as far as the, uh, our partnership is concerned, uh, due to COVID-19, there was a planned uh, reciprocal visit where uh, two teachers were to visit Malawi. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, they have not managed to come. But uh, we are trying to sustain our partnership through communications, regular communications. Just very shortly, uh, I was communicating to our, our partner in Scotland. Uh, one of our partners has uh, assisted uh, in the paying of school fees for one of uh, vulnerable students who has uh, very poor parents. Uh, in fact, uh, through regular communication, I hope we will sustain our partnership despite uh, uh, this COVID-19. Uh, previously, myself and uh, my fellow members of staff, we had uh, some lessons uh, on, uh, we call it, yeah, oh, let me check on, on my notes. On the sustainable partnership, which we are funded by the British Council. Uh, then we also had uh, some core skills uh, lessons by the British Council. In fact, we had to sit down and organize uh, a deliberate uh, training because some teachers did not attend the, uh, the online trainings. So we had a deliberate training where those other teachers, about three of them, who did not attend, uh, had a chance to at least participate in the lessons. In fact, we really enjoyed, and from those lessons, we have at least improved our teaching and learning. That is all I have for the moment because I'm standing outside and maybe network may, may, may disobey again, but I'm really enjoying the, the deliberations. Thanks very much, thank you. Jailos, thank you so much. It's really insightful um, to find out how, how you adapted to your canceled trips. Um, I think reciprocal visits is one of the most powerful forms of partnership and I was really glad to hear that that's actually what you'd gone for as well. Coming up, exactly. uh, yes, <laughs> um, so we've heard from all our wonderful teachers in Scotland and Malawi, and I hope you've all found everything they have to share incredibly useful. As said, we'll be keeping a record of this meeting and everything in the chat, so don't worry if you've missed anything. Moving on, we will be hearing from Kate Webb from Orbis Expeditions, who's going to be able to give an update on current travel uh, opportunities or restrictions, positive adaptations and expected return dates at the moment. Kate, if I can hand over to you. Thanks, Louisa, very much. Um, 
Yes, so we, Dom and I, are just looking for a crystal ball. If anybody's got one, they could uh, send over to us. That would be great. Um, like all of you, we are uh, sitting here and sort of watching the news and keeping our eye on the ground as much as we can to see uh, when things start moving, opening up. They seem to do that a little bit at the end of last year and then we're back again. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of just quickly tell you a little bit about us and um, what the future could look like in terms of travel to Malawi. Um, so my name's Kate and I'm married to Dom and between us we run the Responsible Safari Company based in Blanta and Orbis Expeditions based in the UK. Um, we have been, we lived in Malawi for 10 years and we've been running school trips uh, to Malawi for the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, many of you here have traveled with us um, and hopefully lots of you here are planning to keep on your connection with Malawi and travel out there. Um, we really believe that uh, tourism and travel is one of the very best ways to support Malawi um, and their economy. And that's really the driver for what we do is really trying to support tourism within Malawi and to get um, money into Malawi. So it's all about trying to get school groups out, trying to expose your students to global citizenship and your partnerships on the ground and to support local Malawians there as well. Um, so as much as all of this online is fantastic, we really can't wait to get uh, you back out to Malawi as well and supporting the economic growth of the country. So as um, Louisa has filled us in, 8th of February is the date that we're looking at for schools to open again in Malawi. Um, many of the schools that we're linked with are sitting their exams at the moment and we wish them the best of luck. And every day we're monitoring how things are going um, out in Malawi. So as soon as the school date is uh, released, then we will fill everybody in on that. Um, Keith was mentioning about shared experience. Um, and I think the pandemic has really made us realize that we are all part of one world. And I think having a school partnership and taking people out to Malawi and connecting them as global citizens has never been more important. And I think if we can take a positive from it, that it is that the students that you teach um, and the students in Malawi are going through a similar experience, that similar experience of uncertainty and the unknown. And I think talking about well-being um, is really important in that conversation as well. Um, so what are we doing now? Um, well, we are trying to support our, our uh, schools as much as we possibly can who normally travel with us. And different ways that we're doing that, we're running online uh, resources. So we're putting together different workshops which you can use in your home learning packages that you're providing. We're also doing school assemblies virtually, both live and recorded. Our team in Malawi is also visiting lots of different partner schools and taking lots of different footage and connecting everybody up. Um, what we do a lot of is, is connecting people. So we've got a whole different range of different resources in which you can continue to keep your students engaged. Everybody's been talking about when is it going to happen that we'll be able to get back out there. Well, we want to make sure that we can continue your partnerships and not let your year groups who can't travel out not experience some of the benefits um, of traveling to Malawi. We don't have a cost on these services that we're providing with our lessons. We're just asking for donation based to support our work and to support our team in Malawi as well, while we don't have any travel coming out. Um, so in the future, we are at the moment, we were hoping to bring out schools from Scotland in June. That's probably going to be moving back a little bit now. We're still hoping to run our trips in September and October um, with full steam ahead from spring next year. Um, and in the meantime, we're just going to keep everybody up to date. We've got really good COVID policies in place. So if you do book through us, um, then we're very able to change your date, hold your money, return funds, all of those different things. Um, so yeah, we're just really looking forward to welcoming everybody back. And um, we hope that you will agree that for Malawi and for Scotland, actually getting you out there is one of the key important things about having the partnership. So thank you so much, Louisa. And um, yeah, it's great to be part of today. Thank you so much, Kate. Really valuable roundup considering that the situation changes every single day. It's amazing to have someone that's keeping abreast of that um, as, as we move on. Um, everyone do please see the link to Orbis Expedition School Workshops resources in the chat. 
And we'll move on next to our final spotlight speakers, Stecker Skills. We have three representatives from Stecker Skills. Um, we have Emma Wood, Gift Thompson, who is also on the Scotland Malawi Partnership Youth Committee, and God knows Ms. Teko. So Stecker Skills focus on the development and impact through their Stecker Skills dialogue and approach uh, towards school visits to Malawi. Emma, I believe you're speaking first. Yes, I am. We've got only been given three minutes, so we're going to be very quick. What we are, uh, are you able to see the PowerPoint there? Yes, all good. Great, that's perfect. I'm not, I've only got a few pictures, but the picture you can see here um, is of our dialogue groups that occur at Stecker uh, Children's Home in Malawi and have taken us three years to develop. When the Scotland Malawi Partnership hosted um, some presentations to the Minister of Education for Malawi, what George Watson's school, who's one of our partners, came on before to talk about their trip in the way that some of people have talked about theirs here. And completely unscripted, the pupil uh, who was talking said the absolute highlight for her was her trip to Stecker and our dialogue groups. So we're not talking about a particular a partnership that lasts for ages. What we're talking about is an experience that we have developed for school groups who are visiting Malawi to come and take part in, to help them build the confidence to have profound and deep conversations with people who are not like them. And that's difficult for teenagers. So we're using this, what's called a critical dialogue approach, we have been delighted to be supported by the Scottish Government. We were given international development money for this. And I'm really so proud, we're all really proud, that in the very long document that the Scottish Government has produced, making recommendations to schools about how they should form and conduct partnerships with um, young people in the Global South, we are... <laughs> said to us that uh, they recommend Stecker skills because we help pupils develop a critical reflection on development, power and poverty. And that's what we're about. So I'm going to just hand over now quickly to God Knows, who is going to talk about what he feels as a Malawian as the, the, the impact of these groups. You can see here what these Scots uh, rapturously listening and learning from a Malawian. These are sort of often not the types of photographs that get posted. I'm thinking of Stacey Dooley and her selfie. Uh, this isn't about um, uh, being a white saviour essentially, but here we also have a beautiful one where the Malawians are learning from the Scots. Uh, and the great thing is that the Scottish schools pay to take part in these dialogue groups. So we're really fighting a donor dependency culture. And God knows, do you want to just jump in? Yes, uh, that's that's very true. In fact, um, uh, we preferably the Scottish pupils to pay to take part in our dialogue groups instead of doing work uh, for us or, uh, or making dialogues. In fact, the, the dialogue have really empowered our young people, especially our girls, Andy. It is so great to, to see them welcoming the young Scots as equals and they work together to identify ways of solving some problems young people experiencing both the Scottish and the, the Malawians. So it's a really powerful thing, which really empowers our youth in Malawi and also empowers uh, the youth from Scottish. As together, they manage to identify some problems, challenges that the youth are going through. Thank you so much. Um, uh, that's what I can contribute as of now. And then Gift's going to talk about it from his perspective. Gift's got the stripy T-shirt on in this uh, photograph. So yeah, that's, I think, is anyone, everyone, is everyone able to hear me now? I think I was unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So personally as well, I think that like, it's really, really great and very, very important that like me as a young Malawian and all the other people that have been taking part in the dialogues, we are all able to be treated as equals and not, uh, not dependent, not a dependent. 
And also, I feel that I strongly feel that like it's very, very important that the young people, uh, the the from the Scottish schools that are visiting in Malawi are able to meet people like me and learn from people like me as well as the the other young people who are part of the direct team, uh, because I feel I. In Malawi, it's only a small percentage of, of, of young people that are able, that can afford or are able to go to school because of various reasons. So uh, if the visiting schools are only able to meet these young people that are only in these schools, it's just, they're only meeting a small percentage of like Malawian young people. And this does not really reflect, uh, does not really, they are not really able to meet many young people in Malawi. It's the same as like maybe me only, coming here to Scot in, in Scotland and being able to go to only uh, to, to, Scots uh, to Scotland's only uh, most private, uh, the private schools and the lead, I'm um, sorry. It's like me coming to Scotland and be, uh, uh, it's like me going to Scot coming to Scotland and going to uh, the private schools that are in Scotland or only the elite schools that are here in Scotland. And then from those schools, Making a, making a conclusion to say that, oh, I know uh, many young Scots, I know the young people, I know them very well based on, based on that small percentage. And not only that, but also, uh, I also think that like, just because we as young people at Staker, we've been survivors of like different difficult situations does not necessarily mean that we cannot, we don't want or we cannot be able to share our stories or we don't want other people to learn from our stories so it's really really great that like we we've got that platform where like young people were able to, sh to share our stories we're able to learn from each other like uh we saw from the uh, the last the previous picture that like we're able to learn things like dancing and different things so that like we're all working in solidarity so You've heard a Malawian perspective there. What I will put in the chat, a link to our report, because we've done a really extensive piece of research and report on the impact from this. And I can't read out all the quotes from the young Scots, but they bring a tear to my eye, to be honest, because they are saying, my life has changed as a result of taking part in these dialogues. And their life has changed, they're saying, because they've learned how to be more resilient. They've learned how to overcome their own challenges. They've learned how to speak out when they need to, because they've learned that from these amazing, resilient, fabulous young Malawians. That was the moment they were paid for doing the work. And I think you can see from that photograph what a very positive experience this has been, not just for young Scots, not just for the Malawians, but the young Scots. We're looking to develop this. We've worked with uh, Glenifer High School, Watsons, we've had Knightswood and other schools take part. We'd be delighted to welcome in other schools to help us develop this in the future. So I will put in the chat our contact details. Hopefully we've not gone too much over time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was Emma Wood and gift and god knows from Steka skills really inspiring model um for cultural exchange and i'm sure lots of you will want to be in touch directly with emma so please do it's been wonderful to host all of you today and it's been a real pleasure to bring so many people together from across scotland and malawi and um, a final thing that i would like to share with you is that the next event that we have relevant to youth and schools, we actually have a slide to show. I don't know if Craig can share. Um, we have our online youth festival coming up um, in mid-March from the 15th and 19th of March. We will be talking about the hot topics of race inequality and climate change, engaging young people across Scotland and Malawi to lead the conversation on race inequality and climate change. This is going to be divided into two parts. There is one part that is entirely youth led by our fantastic youth committee of which uh, Gift Thompson is a part of. And they will be leading podcast recordings and downloads. They'll be leading webinars. We're launching new youth specific social media channels that may be of interest to any of the young people that you work with. There'll be competitions launched through those channels and we'll be encouraging as many young people as possible to become members of the Scotland Malawi Partnership of which they'll be able to do through these social media channels. 
The other part of this festival is for schools and youth groups. We'll be or, uh, organising absolutely loads of global education workshops for pupils and youth groups and young people on climate equality and partnership. And there will also be support, advice and continuing professional development for teachers within all of the relevant topics based on the themes. And finally, we are planning to do live digital link-ups between young people in Malawi and Scotland, most likely live conversations with our Malawian climate leaders as run by MASP, Malawi and Scotland Partnership. So that's going to be a week-long of uh, a week-long event of engaging online events designed by young people and to inspire and support more uh, Scots and Malawians to engage in our historic partnership. And it will centre around the key themes, as we've mentioned, of race inequality and climate change. Do keep your eyes peeled for this. Communications will be coming about, out about that very soon. So now we're coming to the end of our event and we've got uh, a few poll questions that we would really appreciate your answers to. Um, Craig, could you now launch the poll questions and we'll just take a few quiet minutes to respond to these. And whilst we're doing that, I will just ask Kirsten Leesk from Connecting Classrooms for Global Learning if you would like to take a moment now to share some words about uh, the new funding available um, through your programme. Thanks very much, Louisa. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just to let people know that Connecting Classrooms for Global Learning, which I know a few of the speakers here tonight have already engaged with, uh, we're just about to launch a very exciting new online partnerships offer, uh, which will enable people to um, collaborate either on a one-to-one -one basis or as a group of schools, both here and in Malawi, uh, with each other. Funding is available for a variety of different um, themes, including training, communications, uh, supply cover for teachers, etc. And within the communications side of things, you can use some of the money to fund Things like, for example, subscriptions to mobile phone contracts, dongles to increase connectivity. So if you're interested, um, please do visit the website. Um, I'll pop the website in the uh, chat box for you to look. We're holding a webinar on the 23rd of February to tell people a little bit more about the offer. And we'll be running this in conjunction with the digital team from Education Scotland in terms of getting some hints and tips on uh, effective digital communication. It's open to schools both here in Scotland and overseas, so um, please do please do join us for that session. It's going to hopefully be of quite quite a, a lot of use to everybody. Uh, we'll also be hearing from teachers who are already engaging uh, in online partnerships and sharing some hints and tips. And obviously, you'd all be very welcome to, to share your hints as well. So thank you very much to Louisa for that, and I'll pop the link in the chat just now. Great, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to bring everyone together today. I think there's been an incredible amount of interesting points made through our discussion groups and I can't wait to read through all of that. All of this will be posted out to you via email and on our website, um, just the video link on the website um, uh, in the next couple of days. Do make sure you've recorded any personal chats that you don't want to forget about, any new contacts that you have made. I really want to give a huge thank you to all the speakers that have uh, connected with us today, including those that called in from Malawi. Even if you didn't manage con to connect, it was really, really appreciated that you came along and prepared and dedicated your time to this. Um, really, really, it's, it's really touching to see how much Malawian voice we increasingly get to involve by holding our meetings through Zoom. And if there's any way we can keep improving that, do let us know from the Malawian side and Scottish as always. Um, we've hit six o'clock, bang on, and it always gives me great pleasure to finish a meeting on time. So I do hope you all have a lovely evening. Thank you so much for coming. Get in touch if there's anything you'd like to do with Youth and Schools of Scotland Malawi Partnership and see you at the Youth Festival, I hope. <laughs> okay.